Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and I'm in my 1.2.5 test world, ready to demonstrate the latest and greatest changes to Red Power 2. As you can see, I've got a screwdriver down there on my hotbar, getting ready to show you guys some of the new machines and some of the new items added by LRM in Red Power 2 for 1.2.5. Um, there's a bunch of different stuff added and uh, she did a pretty nice job on this release. So really excited to show you guys all the cool stuff that you can start building. So let's get started with some of the new items and new machines. Alright guys, so I'm going to start off with one of the biggest things that she's added to Red Power at the moment. Uh, she's added the pump system along with her fluid pipes. Uh, now this is a way of transporting liquids around in Red Power. And it's very different from what you might have been used to with transporting liquids around, so uh, get ready to see some of that. Now the recipe for the pump requires a blue electric motor and uh, get used to this guy because there's going to be some uses of it in the future as well. Um, it's one of those items that's just a crafting component of other items so you can't really use it in the world for anything. Uh, you can also see that you need some fluid pipes. Fluid pipes are simply brass ingots with some glass. Okay, uh, the pump's blue electric motor requires some copper coils and some iron and some blue alloy ingots. And uh, some fine copper wire, of course, is used for the copper coils. And if you guys remember from the last episode of the Red Power update, um, that stuff is crafted with a diamond draw plate and a copper ingot. Diamond draw plate, of course, requires some diamond paneling. Um, and as you recall, you get diamond paneling by using your handsaw here. Um, you get diamond slabs and then finally diamond panels. So uh, you get four diamond panels for a block, which is nine diamonds, and you can go ahead and use those to get your diamond draw plates. Now, if you're worried about the excess cost of diamonds, one of the things she did add was the ability to convert your diamond panels back down to two diamonds. So you won't get back all nine diamonds if you convert it. It's basically you lose one diamond in the process, but it is a way to reclaim some of your diamonds if you need to. So, now that we've seen how to craft the pump and the fluid pipes, let's see how we use them. Uh, one of the other items you're going to need here is a grate. And the grate is crafted like so, just some iron bars around a fluid pipe. Cool. And a grate will act like a liquid input and output block. So basically, you place down your grate in the world, like so, and rotate it with your screwdriver as you're used to. And one of the sides of the grate has a connection for some liquid pipes. And you can run your liquid pipes like so. Pretty cool. And uh, what will happen is any water touching the grate can be sucked up and any water flowing through the pipes and that goes into the grate will be ejected into the world. So let's do a practical example right now. So if I wanted to, I would put my grate right here in some water and make sure that it's oriented to the point where the uh, liquid pipes are coming out of the grate. And I could run them along to a pump, the pump being right there. Now the pump has two sides that you can connect the pipes to and you want to reorient it so that the side with the little black part here right now is where it's going to pull liquid from. And uh, this side is where liquids are going to be ejected out to. And you will need to run some blue electric cabling to this guy just to get him powered up. So he will require blue electricity to power and run. Cool. And uh, once the blue electricity cable is connected there, it should be operational. You can see the little blue light turn on indicating that it's got enough power to start running. Hooray! Now your next thought might be, all right, so we can pump water out, but where do we store it? Are there tanks to store it in? No, there are not. You need to build your own tanks, which is really pretty neat. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, create a nice little area to build and store my water in. And you can make it whatever size and shape you want. Simply just create a nice open area, like so. And make sure that you are got room here for your grate to go into. And the grate needs to connect to the liquid, of course. And whatever size you want to make this in shape, like I said, it doesn't have to be really any shape at all. Uh, so I'm going to build out a nice little tank, and I'll be right back. And keep in mind, it also doesn't need to be made out of glass. You can make it out of whatever material you want, cobblestone, stone, anything really. Um, the only reason I'm doing it as glass is so you guys can see um, how it works. Cool. 
There we go, I've made a nice little glass tank of whatever size I wanted. And you guys might notice that I made it a point to put a roof on top of that tank. Definitely do that or you will make a mess, I'm not kidding. Uh, the final piece here is just to apply a redstone signal to your pump. So let's do that right now and get it running. Just gonna grab myself a lever. All right, got myself some levers. I'm just gonna place one on the ground and apply a redstone signal. And you'll see the pump starts to run and it's gonna pull water out of the lake near here. And all the source blocks are gonna be deposited directly inside my tank. Pretty cool. And you can see it's just gonna pull out source blocks from the, lo the water lake and fill up the tank. And once the tank is nice and full, no more liquid will transfer. Awesome. And you could, of course, turn off the pump and stop it from running. And uh, if we took a look around here, you can see there's probably, if we look around a bit, some water source blocks that got pulled away. Hey, there they are. So you can see some uh, water source blocks were pulled out of this lake uh, from nice and far away. Uh, the range of the pump, I believe, is configurable. And... Uh, Right now, it's got a pretty decent range to it, so it can pull out a significant amount of water from a very far distance away. Pretty awesome. And this, of course, does work on lava, but there's some other really neat mechanics of the pump that I want to show you as well. Now, do bear in mind, of course, you can pump lava as well as water. Just got to run it up to a lava lake like that, and ta-da, it'll suck all the lava out of the lava lake. Sweet. And deposit all the source blocks inside your tank. How nice is that, huh? Very cool. And because of this mechanic, there's some pretty interesting machines you can make. Why don't I build something real quick and show you guys. And do note, just like uh, any other pumping system that you're familiar with, you will be left with some uh, flowing lava blocks after uh, you empty out a lava lake. That's just regular old Minecraft physics. Nothing you can do about it. So here's a neat little machine that I just built with this little pump system and some red power items. Uh, we've got a block breaker there, and I'm going to place uh, just a you know, water source block right up here, okay? Right above where the lava is gonna land from the pump and the grate. Now I'm gonna make sure to cop, top off the top here. What do you think this system's gonna do? Hmm, what is Direwolf up to, you may ask? And why don't I get myself a nice lever to throw down there? Where'd I put my levers? Okay, so what's gonna happen now is, uh, and I could have automated this if I wanted to, but we're good. This will pump lava out push it through the pump, and place it right underneath that water source block. And what happens when the water source block hits the lava? It's going to turn into obsidian, which will be broken by the block breaker and sent into the chest. If I set this all up correctly, let's see what happens. Turn it on, starts pumping. Ta-da! automatic obsidian generator. At least, of course, until you run out of lava. Sweet. And finally, there's an interesting and uh, pretty intelligent pathfinding mechanism here. You can connect to source blocks that are not touching the grate here. So we've got some flowing lava blocks, right? Let's go ahead and place some uh, lava source blocks nice and far away. So we'll put like six of them up here and uh, it should link down and connect to those guys. The grate will be able to pathfind, and as long as there's some flowing lava source blocks further away, uh, we should be able to connect to them and get them going if uh, Minecraft physics want to behave. Let's see what happens. See? So your source blocks, it will path to and collect. So if you have a big lava waterfall in the nether, yeah, this will work. You can just connect to the base of the lava waterfall, and it'll drain all the source blocks from the top of the waterfall. How cool is that? All right, so that's enough about pumps and pipes and all the cool stuff you can do with it. Uh, there's some really interesting builds you can start working on, and uh, let me just say that there's more to come on this. Can't really say more than that, but definitely more to come. All right, let's uh, look at some of the other neat new items were added in the latest version of Red Power 2. All right, guys, next up, there was a massive logic rewrite. A lot of the functions of logic gates have changed. Um, most of them are pretty much the same, but she basically rewrote them so that behind the scenes they're different. And there's a little bit of new functionality as well as a few new gates. So why don't I cover the new logic gate rewrite next up?
All right, first up we've got this bad boy, the Synchronizer. Uh, as you can see, there's a new type of logic tile called the Silicon Chip, and that is a red-doped wafer on top of three stone wafers, and you get three Silicon Chips, and that's part of the Synchronizer. Now think of an AND gate, okay, with your Synchronizer. Normally an AND gate, you'd have to keep both inputs on in order for the output to turn on, right? Okay, so let's check this out. If we pulse this side and turn it off, note that this little red line here turned off. And if we pulse this side, note that it sends a pulse out here. So the synchronizer is kind of like a pulser meets an AND gate in that you need to have both sides at some point get a pulse of redstone, either with a button push or an on off of a lever, or you know, both levers on, that's fine. And then uh, once that happens, it sends out a pulse in front. Pretty cool. And uh, if you have a wire hooked up to the back here and you've pulsed one side, this side will reset the system for you. And you could also keep this side on, it'll kind of disable the system. It'll like keep it reset. So no functionality at all when the uh, bottom slot is turned on, but uh, otherwise it acts as a reset. Sweet. Next up, we've got this bad boy. He is called the Transparent Latch. Pretty complicated looking device, uh, but pretty cool. Now this guy is really cool, and uh, it's got some advanced features I'm not gonna go into in the spotlight, but it's really good for making a shift register. Basically what happens is, while the redstone signal is off here, this lever does nothing. But while this redstone signal is on, um, the other two outputs here, this one and this one are your outputs, will toggle with this guy. And when you turn this redstone signal off, it remembers what the setting was and this thing no longer has any effect. So basically turn this on to have this guy affect the outputs. And when you turn this off, it remembers what the output setting is. Pretty sweet. And uh, there's a really good way to make a shift register here. And uh, I'll probably show it in some other video in the future. Next up, we've got this bad boy right here, the randomizer. Another type of chip, the tainted silicon chip, is simply a silicon chip with a piece of glowstone dust. That's the recipe for the randomizer. And uh, what the randomizer does is it'll randomly emit um, redstone signal out. So why don't I grab myself a lever here too, because I want you to see that uh, basically when you pulse a redstone signal, it'll randomly light up one of the sides, or none of them, or multiple ones. So pretty cool. So totally random what you'll get. And if you leave the redstone signal on, it'll keep randomly ticking all over the place. Sweet, randomizer is random. Next up, we've got the state cell, personal favorite of mine. Check this thing out. Um, you can set a timer interval like so and uh, go ahead and supply a redstone signal here. And note when this redstone signal is on, it emits a redstone signal from the front. And when the redstone signal is off, the timer ticks pulses the right side, and then turns off. So this could be a button press, or this could be, you know, whatever you want, but uh, basically you would uh, have a little bit of a count, and then it'll pulse on the right. So that is that guy. And the bottom input here acts as a delay mechanism. So you can pulse it, and it'll keep the front on, and then as soon as you turn off the bottom, it lets the timer go. Pulse. Awesome. That's a personal favorite of mine, because uh, it's kind of like two blocks in one almost. Those uh, complicated designs I made with my nuclear reactor, I think I could do everything there with just that one little block. So cool. Um, and the RS Norlatch got a bit of a change as well. So I'm going to real quick show you the RS Norlatch changes and then move on to two more of the new guys that showed up. Um, the RS Norlatch here. Um, remember, standard functionality is you pulse one side and both the input that you use to pulse with and that side comes out. And uh, pulse this side and both come out. Well, if you take your screwdriver and you're familiar with the fact that you can right click with your screwdriver to rotate things around, right? Okay, cool same functionality. If you shift right click, so look at me, I'm shift right clicking, so crouch right click, um, you'll have a mirror mode enabled which will reverse it. So I don't know if you guys have really used a lot of logic gates, but um, this mirror mode works for almost all of them, including the multiplexer and all those other things, but um, sometimes you can only do things from one side and it would be really complicated to work from the wrong side of the logic gate. So by shift right clicking, you activate the mirror mode, which kind of reverses it. 
Um, most logic gates do have the mirror functionality, and uh, really it's hard to explain exactly how it works, but uh, if you've run into problems with logic gates in the past, you might love this change. Um, and now you can also, with the RS Norlatch's unique one, there's a third and fourth functionality. If we shift right click again, it puts on this weird mode. Uh, what this does, basically, is um, it keeps only the outputs on but not the inputs so remember before when i was pulsing it would turn on the output and then keep the input on well in this mode the rs nor latch does not keep the input on ever so both options available to you there and then this also has a mirror mode where it's kind of the reverse type of deal awesome and then shift right click again to go back to the old standard functionality loving it and then another good example of the shift click functionality that's been added, I'll just throw this down here as a counter. You can see the uh, block interface on the counter has changed a little bit, but it works the same exact way it did before. But now you've got a little plus and minus side, so it's a clear indication of which side adds and which side subtracts. And uh, as you're used to, you can rotate this guy like so. Um, but if you wanted to make it a little bit easier, you could shift right click, and all that does is toggle which side is the plus and minus. So there's a good indication of which one of these um, sides is plus and minus and how the shift right click functionality of the screwdriver works on this guy. All right, on to the bus transceiver. Oh my, look at this. Yep, new tile, stone bundles, which is a stone wafer and a bundled cable. Um, LRAM describes this as 32 AND gates in one. Basically, and let me get this system reset to show you. So what I've got here is a piece of cobblestone with a light on top, a white light and a green light. And behind the scenes, we've got some white uh, covered cable and some green cable going into a bundle cable, which goes into this AND gate type deal. This is the bus transceiver. And then some more bundled cable coming out the other side with white and green cables going over to these levers, okay? Basically what happens is when you flip one lever, it turns on this green light and it acts as an AND gate with this side of the bus transceiver. When you flip on this lever, it connects the AND gate and allows the green thing to travel through. So green on and off, white on and off. Sweet. And turn this guy off, and it's no longer connecting the AND gate functionality. The other side allows it to work in reverse. So uh, with this on, you note that the green light will not turn on the other green light. But if we turn this guy on, now it'll work. Cool. And one more feature is if you have both of them on, it acts as kind of like a memory cell in that it'll remember and store the signal so that when you turn on a green light and turn off this green light, they're both kept on. It's kind of like, you know, they're keeping each other powered. And there's some pretty cool little uh, functionality here in that you can see which signals are turned on. So let's take a look at that real fast. So if we turn that off when green's on, it powers this little light here. And when white is on, it powers this little light. So uh, I'm sure there's a map for this, but as you know, there's 16 different colors of cables. And if you look real carefully, you can see that this is actually four rows of four for a total of 16 blocks. So this little state cell here is telling you, or this little bus transceiver here, is telling you exactly which bundled cables are on and off. That is awesome. Total win. And finally, something that I guarantee a lot of you will enjoy, uh, the light sensor. Senses light. Check that out. So uh, you can see there's some amount of light in this little darkish kind of cave here. And if I cover up the walls and let almost all the light go away, it turns off the redstone signal. So this light sensor will emit a redstone signal in the presence of any light. However, if we shift right click on it with a screwdriver, normal right click rotates it and shift right click will close the shutter a little bit. Note that little shutter closing effect. And if you close it down more, then it needs a good amount of light to be activated. So right now it's darker on this block than the light sensor can react to. If we put a torch right on top, it will emit a redstone signal. Or if we open it up a direct line of sight to the sky, it will also emit the redstone signal. But uh, this area right now, too dark to emit the redstone signal. But open it up all the way again, and now there's enough light to emit it. So you can configure how much light causes the redstone signal to emit. Awesome. All right, guys, and now there's two more items that I want to show you before wrapping up this update for Red Power 2. Uh, I want to show you the ejector and the relay. So let's get started taking a quick look at those guys. Okay, the ejector 
and the relay, two very useful and powerful items. The ejector is crafted with cobblestone and wood and redstone, and then you need a transposer and a buffer. And the relay is almost identical, you just use red doped wafer on the bottom instead of redstone. Let's take a look at what these guys can do for us. Um, the relay is a very simple item. It's basically a transposer and a chest in one. It's an inventory, so it has an inventory for items to go into, and any items that land in that inventory are automatically ejected into the chest behind it. So the relay really acts as a relay between anything that can place items in chests and tubes. Now, some of you guys might be aware of this, but most of you might not be able to. It's kind of hard to code your machines to put items into pneumatic tubing. So uh, basically what happens is if you're trying to uh, use an arcane bore, for example, from Thalmcraft, you might not um, be able to connect pneumatic tubes to the arcane bore. Um, but if you were to connect the relay there, the arcane bore can automatically deposit its items into an inventory like a chest. Well, if you put the relay behind the arcane bore, that's an uh, acceptable inventory for items to land in, and then they'll automatically be dumped into the pipe network as shown. Let's try that out real quick. So I've got my arcane bore set up here, and uh, if I wanted to connect some uh, pneumatic tubing that could lead out of the arcane bore and into a chest nearby, let's see what happens. I'm going to place the chest right down here. Cool. And uh, give this guy a whirl. Oh no! Items are not going through the pneumatic tube network. Not good. They're just sitting on the top there. That's because it's hard to get pneumatic tubes to uh, connect to and work with machines not part of Red Power. So that's where we get the relay in. Simply connect your relay up like so. Place it there. Make sure it's oriented so that the um, output face is in the pneumatic tube network. There we go. Now let's give this guy a try. Ta-da! And it's going to emit very quickly pretty much everything it can, and it'll emit in chunks of uh, block um, stacks. So if it does have a stack of blocks, it'll emit them. So there's the functionality of the relay. It's really meant to work with, um, you know, other mods. Pretty cool. And the ejector is pretty much the exact same thing, except it needs a redstone signal to emit its item, and it'll only emit one item at a time, rather than stacks. So that's the ejector. Pretty much the same thing as the relay, just not automatic. Sweet. And this will also work with forestry for your tree farms that will automatically deposit items inside of a um, inventory and all that kind of cool stuff. And guys, I think that about wraps it up for the latest updates to Red Power 2 that you guys all have access to in version 1.2.5 of Minecraft. Hope you guys enjoyed checking out this Spotlight video. Take it easy!